today's world. What is our role to the oppressor? Entertainment. Service. Don't think, don't challenge, just entertain. Keep us happy with your dance. Now, there are many levels in which to interpret this. This is one, for certain. So after about four months had passed, you have to ask four months of what kind of year? Was it a four month of a regular 362 day cycle year? Was it four months of a great year of 25,000 some odd um, um, years? If it's that kind of year, then you're talking about 6,000 years. And 6,000 would bring you from the year 4,000, the year in which the first dynasty came on, that we are currently agreed to, up to today. Or April, I want to say it, April 29th, 1992, Rodney King time. Or the end of the 500 year cycle from Christopher Columbus in 1492 up to 1992, in time which the Europeans were able to gain control over two continents, North America and South America, and even over our homeland. So very important questions being dealt. But I'm just saying all this, all that, <coughs> I got off the track, please. All that is tied into the noonday sun, Horace ben Hutchet. Horace ben Hutchet, in the Horace ben Hutchet story, is a warrior story. It speaks of all the ways in which Horace dealt on set, and how Horace, the kind of moves Horace had to develop to deal on set, and Horace was absolutely ferocious. Oh, just sweet with it. Went all over the country, cleaning up his country. So it certainly has a model of how we can clean up certain tendencies in ourselves, be it jealousy between Africans, paranoia between Africans, or fear of confrontation with the lost ones. And very much the fear of confrontation with our fulfilling our own true purpose in life, whatever our spiritual mission might be. So we have the noonday sun Kemper, I mean the rising sun Kemper, noonday sun Horus and Hutel, the setting sun of Tumu. Now Tumu is another common, a very powerful concept. Tumu, the god of the setting sun, Tumu was said to be the first human to be worshipped as a god. Tumu was said to be the first man. So in other words, Tamu is the correct name for the original Adam, not Adam. That's the name we use for our own concept of Adam. It was the name Tim or Tamu. Now these various concepts of light indeed were considered in terms of the pineal gland or the eye of Peru. Let us consider one other aspect, and that has to do with the concept of the moon. A very critical thing, because when does the pineal hormone melatonin operate? During darkness. And I submit to you, brothers and sisters, that part of our enslavement, mental slavery, the oppressor knows who you truly are. He knows he can't compete. That's known. As long as they practice certain negative conditions, they can't compete. But they're hung up on practicing certain negative conditions. They love it too sweetly. It's between them and their God to come terms with that. I, can, I, as a psychiatrist, I cannot make anybody get better who doesn't want to get better. I have no control at all. We just play games. And I have a lot of people who play games. Lots and lots. <laughs> But it's not about healing. It's about wasting time playing. Now the other point, but yet when we come to this thing about moonlight, notice the story. The god of moonlight is Tahuti, or Thoth. And Tahuti's primary companion, female companion, are the goddess Ma and the goddess Seshet. All three of these 
principles relate to states of mind, states of genius mind. The god Tehuti, or Thoth, was considered the perfect image of a super genius mind. Notice what that's saying. That Africans knew that inside of their own being, there was a part of them that was a god. Not a guess, but a reality. And it was a super genius quality. That meant that every African has a part of them that which we call that special black factor. You know when you're in a crisis and you gotta show enough, get down, and you step on it, and then you hit light, warp speed, and do something fantastic, and then if you're still in mental slavery, say, oh, what was that? Oh, I'm so happy the Lord saved me. You saved yourself. <laughs> but you, don't, you didn't give true credit to your other self. You see, the oppressor knows there's a little you and the big you. And here is a key point of the game. A key point of the game is to hypnotize Africans and to make them only believe that the little self is the only real one. And to dismiss the big self as fantasy too good to be true, or worse yet, Dracula or Frankenstein, or the bad nigga. Any of those images are the of super excellent achievement, the so-called super, nothing super, that's just regular stuff. Africans called it the car factor, the soul factor. It was this thing that was freed up by living a virtuous life and studying science. So the oppressor's game is to hide images of black excellence of mental function. When a black person like Michael Jordan plays basketball and shows great skill, they say, oh, it's what? Instinct. It's, it's automatic. He didn't think it through. It's instinct. What is that trying? They're trying to hide no kind of instinct. He spent years and years of hard, diligent study and work. When it comes to a person like George Washington Carver, they do not want to talk about him at all. Why? Because George Washington Carver was the greatest living chemist on the planet in probably the past 10,000 years. But how did George Washington Carver become that? Did he go to Harvard? No, George Washington Carver led an ethical life and studied science and nature. In particular, George Washington Carver got up early in the morning while the sun was still down and went out in nature and held communion and conversation with the invisible realm. Meaning what? If you want to step on your, if you want to embrace your higher mind, you have to do it in a certain time, 24-hour day cycle. It's scientific. In other words, you catch it at a time when your melatonin level is already at its peak level, at its midnight, and then shortly before daybreak, when the other deities are out there willing to convert, to converse with you. So let's say a George Washington Carver could ask questions of his mind, say, I want to know this, and plant what he has to tell me. And then he could hear the plants talk back to him and tell him the chemical formulas and secrets. He was having a conversation with nature because George Washington.